while we are uh, doing the arrangement, I want to introduce you, uh, Dr. Professor Dr. Yi Li, who is coming from Beijing Normal University, China. She is the supervisor of the doctoral students. She is uh, working on the designing of application for the new platforms and the learning resources that are computer supported uh, for the collective learning, as well as the learning analytics. So she has uh, uh, many uh, national uh, funding uh, projects, and she has also published a lot of uh, papers in international journals and international conferences. Without further ado, uh, let's welcome uh, Dr. Yin Yin Li. Dr. Yin Yin Li, your turn. Okay, thank you, my girl. I'm glad that you see my old friend, yeah? Okay, good morning, everyone. Thank you very much for inviting me to speak to you today. And just now, I read a book that introduced the history of ICAT. I'm happy to find that I attended the conference several times and I visited Japan, Tunisia, and Greece, etc. So, today I'm going to talk about the potentials of applying multimodal learning analytics for computer supported collaborative learning process. As you know, collaboration is one of the five core competences for the 21st century, and it's a topic that runs through every term and a theme of our lives. Focus on the educational scenario, collaborative learning is an important way to cultivate and enhance collaborative competence which has been at the center of educational and learning sciences research since 1980s. A number of studies have reported the benefits of collaborative learning, but we can't ignore that collaborative learning is a complex process that may not always lead to desirable outcomes. In the CSO practices, there are some problems with students' performance, such as superficial information sharing, the students may lack of meaningful logic construction, and the tense atmosphere within a group, and without uh, uh, come to a constant of task understanding. And also, they will have some problem with social loafing with low engagement. So, how to solve this one? To overcome the weaknesses, a number of instructional interventions and strategies have been suggested to support for collaborative learning that is context sensitive and interactive. Collaborative learning is a temper unfolding process and as such can only be captured as a series of interaction emerging over time. In so doing, data is a very important driver of learning process. We want our intervention to be designed with insight based on observations from a large number of students. So we know when to offer support that is going to be effective. In 2011, learning analytics emerged, which is a measurement collection analysis and the reporting of data about learners and their context for understanding of and optimizing learning and the environment in which it occurs. And with the availability of various devices, so we propose have a such circle of multimodal learning analytics. You can see the picture, start with the multimodal data, we can see we have a text, audio, log data, or other video, even with the physiology. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, your slide is not changing. So are you able to share the entire screen? Yeah, uh, my slide doesn't change. Uh, yeah, yeah, you see the first page. The first oh, that's so weird. The second, I'm oh, sorry. What's wrong? I just... Uh, Uh, 
uh, maybe you can share the entire screen. I mean, uh, yeah. Is that okay? Yeah, okay, I'll try. Uh, yeah. Okay, I can share because it uh, reminded me not to share the entire screen oh. <laughs> to avoid some weird, okay. Okay, can you see my entire screen right now? Uh, it is okay. Yeah, it's sharing, and please have the screen uh slideshow and go to. Okay, yes, we can do it. It's okay. You. Okay, yes. sorry, <laughs> sorry for the technology some strange problem. So I just quick uh okay uh slide. You just see there's some problem with the uh, collaborator learning I just mentioned, and so with I, I mentioned that. Uh, we have to uh, give the context-sensitive and interactive learning process with uh, data-driven learning analytics. And with such, we propose a cycle of deployment. You can see the figure, and we can use the different devices to collect data from the audio, uh, video, and text, and some even physiological data. And with such data, we can uh, use some learning analytics uh, with the technology to do some analysis. You can see here, we use the model, we can use some data to train our model and then use a model to monitor the collaboration in real time and that produce some data which keeps the cycle flowing. So right now we are developing the scaffolding with different forms such as dashboard, script, or conversational agent, et cetera. And uh, we hope to, with such scaffolding, aim to facilitate the sale process by triggering a more efficient and effective learning process at a cognitive, emotional, social, or metacognitive levels. Ultimately, we want to lead to the improvement of the collaborative learning outcome and with such a cycle of deployment, we propose a, a analysis model, a framework for CCO. You can see here, the framework consists of three analysis units, individual, small group, or big group as a community, within which includes three research forces that uh, includes a uh, large construction, learning behavior, and social emotional interaction. And the large construction mainly refer to what are the students talking about. It mainly uh, refer to the knowledge structure or how they build the knowledge on others. Uh, feedback, the learner behavior, reflects on how to discuss with others. It indicates the characteristics, temporal and sequential uh, pattern involved in the collaboration. And a social emotional interaction, for example, who they are talking with. It reflects the interaction pattern between the group members and further reveals the effect of the interaction structure during the process of a collaboration. And the most of the time involves the collaborators' emotions. And my team have been researching on Cecil for 15 years we have been conducting the studies across the uh, elementary school, middle school, and college levels. And then you can see from the table, we run the different uh, types or disciplines. We try to cover the different contexts from the information technology, English to computer science, science or biology like that. And the interaction includes uh, online interaction, asynchronous or synchronous. Uh, of course, we also uh, can consider face-to-face -face interaction. And also, the activity play a very important role in CSO domain. So we have several different uh, uh, forms of activities. And uh, first, uh, you can see here, we have some uh, are conducted in real classroom and some are uh, conducted in the laboratory. And uh, next, I will introduce some typical and peer study. The first of all, I want to introduce a series of studies in collaborative argumentation. You know that argu a collaborative argumentation is widely acknowledged as an essential skill and offers cognitive and social benefits for students across different education levels. 
it refers the students can critically discuss the venture claims and they work together to produce the finally integrated opinion. And in this study, you can see we encourage the participants to draw a uh, argument map before they discuss and then they will form the group with the different uh, opinions and the two supporters and two op opponents in each group and finally they will form a integrated group diagram and here the data we connected includes uh, the uh, multimodal information such as the learner's volume facial expressions uh, body movement uh, was into taking was taking taking into consideration and here is the example you can see here there is an expert for a low performing group and we can see we just uh, do some uh, coding with the uh, students frown gaze a touch tone or look down the movement of their uh, based on the uh, uh, video we recorded and finally we will do some uh, analysis about the temporal and sequential pattern of their social emotion interaction and here i list some main findings and also based on such uh, a study we have some implication for teachers and uh, tool developers how to encourage the participants to be more respected to others and try to uh, reach the consensus with more social and cognitive enhancement like that. And follow that, we try to do more in-depth analysis. And so we use the ENA to do the uh, co-occurrence of these course moves and social emotional interaction. In the prep study, we just focus on social emotional, but you know, the discourse moves represent how the uh, participants thinking. So we use such methods to do the analysis. We try to compare what's the difference between the low performing groups and high performing groups, and to try to uh, get some ideas from their behaving and their thinking and their talking like that and follow this study we conduct a third study and here you know the important point is that why the high performing group differ from the low performing group i want to know the reason behind their behavior pattern or characteristics so regulation play an important role in collaboration. So in this study, we try to focus on study about the social emotional regulation. We try to compare the two different performed groups, how they regulate, whether they have different uh, ideas or uh, when there are some challenges, how to solve it, how to negotiate. So we just do this study. And here you can see, we also connect the data from the videos and we do some semi-structured interviews. And with such data analysis, we do some, uh, uh, we do some, uh, you can see here the group, the pattern, uh, the, their uh, transition uh, of their behavior. And we found that just different challenges regarding the emotional challenge the so the cognitive uh, challenge and what will they react when they encounter challenges what will they use the strategies will they adopt to tackle such challenges so this study just want to do a very small uh, but very interesting uh, study want to do some the uh, a comparison between the low performing uh, groups and high performing uh, groups. And here we just use a video and the uh, semi structured uh, interview and we try to do the hybrid uh, uh, analysis. But you know that uh, there is uh, increasing attention goes to the physiological uh, data. So because you know, our uh, participants is uh, uh, graduate student, uh, undergraduate students. Sometimes they can 
uh, how to say, they can keep some uh, secret, so to say, they will not uh, express them fairly directly. They will try to hide behind their faces. So, and in this study, we use the uh, videos and heart rate, and we incorporate the uh, physiology data to uh, unveil the uh, synchronization of the group members when they argument each other and uh, how they regulate when they encounter the challenges. And here you can see we develop uh, a draws of regulation or as a platform and uh, we identify the synchronized physiology activated the events and uh, combine them with coded challenges and the social regulation. You can see here the uh, what's wrong with this one? Okay, you can see here, the step one, we just uh, computing the individual students based on how uh, rates. Actually, we are seeing your uh, Chrome browser. Or you can't see, you can't was, see. I was in your browser. Yeah, so probably, uh, are you sharing? Oh, sorry. Uh, what what do you want to share? Can can you see now? Uh, we are seeing the the crown. Can you see uh, the mask room? Can you uh, see it? No, we 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 just see no? the crown, uh with the with Sorry. the Google. Oh, uh, because yeah. I just to click the height button because. Um. Oh, maybe a second. I try to open it again. Can you see right now? Uh, we are seeing your PowerPoint. This is you can see my you can see my screen. Yes, I can see your screen. That's the PowerPoint. Can you see the my PowerPoint? Uh, right see. now is uh right now is the PowerPoint. Is the PowerPoint? Can you see it right now? Yes. Yes. Okay, that's <laughs> because I just click the hidden button to to because of the I mentioned. So, sorry. Okay, I'll continue. And here you see, after we got the uh, the baseline of the group members' uh, physiology, uh, and uh, we try to align the synchronized physiology of our episode with challenges and the left figure. And you can see here the bottom line is the coded challenges based on the video, and the above three nice represent the team members physiological data just to high rate we try to uh, align with when they encounter the challenges are there any uh, big uh, uh how to say the big um, waves the big change of their heart rate and you can see here the different color represent uh, different uh, members here we just uh, the different member uh, the, the here and uh, this now represent the challenges and we see that uh, when they come some challenges and uh, the group members heart rate will be aroused at the same time and uh, on the right figure we try to do a regulation and here we divide the regulation into two uh, dimensions. One is the medical cognitive regulation, and the second is the social emotional regulation, represented by green and a red color. And at the same time, we try to uh, align with the heart rate of the team members. It's very, uh, uh, how to say, it's very unexpected that uh, we have four members, but uh, just uh, at most time, just three members assault their uh, heart rate at the same time. And I always have a member just to uh, leave on now or have any, don't have any big reaction. So this is a panel study. We try to incorporate their facial expression, their text uh, language, and their facial uh, uh, data to reflect how to regulate their learning strategy collaborate to progress when they encounter some challenges and as to how to solve this 
So this study is very interesting, and it gave us some uh, implication if you want to do more uh, uh, yes, I just attach the articles at the bottom of the slides. If you have interest, you can search it, okay? And that's the first part. And the second part is about the uh, collaborative problem-solving activities. Here, CPS has been another productive form of collaborative learning. Our team also conducted several empirical studies in such a, a context to further investigate the learning engagement and the learning center emotions in collaborative learning. And here is the first uh, uh, study. We just, uh, uh, here is, uh, we recruit the uh, participants from the undergraduate students and they are required to solve a real life ill such a problem use uh, a cross discipline knowledge and within two days and write uh, the final is paper to print the solution and uh, in total about 99 undergraduate participants participate in this experiment and the data we collect include uh, the dialogue and the video data of students and here you know that in the previous study i just mentioned all of the video just uh, coded manually we just look at the video one by one and code it uh, different with uh, at least two uh, members and we do some consistent checking but it requires much labor and time and so in this part of studies we try to use some technologies to help us to do some auto coding and here we just connect data and we train the deep learning models to identify the engagement in terms of the cognitive, social, emotional, and behaviors of learners by their by analyzing their speech and their facial expression. And here you can see the two pictures. On the left hand, you can see we just use the a bird and uh, some other uh, uh, mature model to train it and uh, we just uh, use uh, deep learning to use the uh, text data and input and uh, uh, use a bird plus uh, LSTM to train the model and finally we just uh, coded the text to of the collaborative discussion automatically and on the right side we just use the uh, video uh, auto analysis and you can see here we just train a deep learning model and finally we design several uh, centered emotionals and uh, the system will report the final detecting a result to us and uh, just to give some details uh, findings here you can see after the auto coding the final result uh, just to follow into three categories, behavior engagement, cognitive, and social emotion engagement. We can see their change, their uh, evolve during their collaboration progress. And the main findings is that uh, the hand performing groups had a full participation in discussion and uh, exhibit a higher levels of logic construction and uh, have positive social emotional interaction in contrast the lower performing groups have only one person speaking and they have more lective uh, social emotional interactions and uh, also we just now we just uh, treat the engagement into three dimensions cognitive social emotional and behavioral but we are thinking the engagement may be interact uh, each other. So in this study, we try to explore how the cognitive and the social emotional interaction into why. And here we just do some the uh, analysis and we just uh, based on the auto coding, we examine the fluctuations 
or in different levels of cognitive interaction and the transactions in different violence of social emotional interaction. And here you can see the figure, we give some snapshot of the fluctuation in cognitive interaction for one group. And on the right side, you can see here, there are some transactions in their social emotional interaction as the time passed by. And also, we try to examine how fluctuations in cognitive interaction fluctuated during, during the transition between different violence of the emotional, such as the positive, neutral, and elective. And here we give some uh, results. And our main uh, findings, uh, it's, uh, 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 it's very uh, obvious that uh, the neural social image interaction is significant associated with uh, decreased uh, cognitive interaction. And this is for this, uh, this uh, study. And uh, regarding the other, uh, I, regarding the videos analysis, and we try to uh, construct a uh, emotional database, especially focus on the online collaborative learning. And this study was conducted in the COVID nineteen period. So you know, as I turn, the students have to study online. So we just define six emotions: the happy, engaged, frustrated. And very in a very interesting atmosphere is that sleepy. You can see it's very common. So we can see that with such uh, uh, online learning, the students will easily feel sleepy if uh, the teachers can't give a very quick and immediate uh, interactive uh, on, in, during their online uh, teaching. And here we just use the uh, facial expressions and hand gestures of students. We construct a database and uh, we hear the nonverbal emotion and behaviors are spontaneous because all the images are recorded during the um, real day, a scenario in the real classroom and leading to a robust learner emotion recognition model. And also, based on the automatic detection of the emotions, we try to see uh, the emotional change of the high performing students and the low performing students. And we have some uh, findings. Uh, and here you can see that uh, we have uh, know that uh, the high achiever they have more greater emotional fluctuations. But for the low performing, they just keep the neural emotion states occasionally experiencing period of focus regarding the overall stable emotions. But for the high performing students, their emotions will change, uh, uh, have changed greater compared to others. It's very, very interesting. And uh, regarding such kind of uh, uh, study unveiling the collaborative process. We also conduct study about knowledge elaboration. You know that elaboration is very important to, to uh, for students to acquire the knowledge and retain their knowledge uh, based on the collaborative with others. And uh, here we just uh, uh, do an automatic analysis. We propose a process oriented automatic methods to analyze the logic elaboration based on the discussion transcripts. And we identify six indicators to measure the students' logic elaboration, such as the coverage of key terms, activation, equability, and so on. And here, we just uh, take my course as a experiment uh, uh, a scenario and uh, it's a blended learning mode and it's a real class scenario. And uh, there are many students uh, took part in the course. And here 
we give uh, we just uh, uh, developed a web-based tool to do some interactive we can click it and the tool can give some uh, feedback uh, if you want to look into the group or group members individual or group level like that it's uh, uh, how to say it's look like a hybrid web-based tool to uh, visualize the group level knowledge generation and individual knowledge elaboration and with such uh, mainly studies, we found that to the family, we try to do some scaffolding. After finding so many rules of collaborative process and some findings of interest in their behavior, we try to motivate the students to a higher level logic construction and uh, their emotional will be more positive like that so in the latter part i want to introduce some uh, studies regarding the scaffolding tool the first one is about group aware tool you can see here based on the proof study i just mentioned it's very complex but you know after the study we found the less the better so we just uh, simplifies the dashboard into three one is a cognitive awareness just like a keyword cloud and the second the social awareness and the behavior awareness of the group members and the way conduct study in a real uh, uh, learn, uh, classroom scenario and we just um, collect data in chronox from the Moodle cream plan questionnaire and the semi structural interviews here. And we search, we try to say what's the effect of such a tool on the student's large construction and uh, the findings can give more uh, implication for the tool designers, how to uh, design the tool to cater for the students real lead. And also we try to give some implications for, uh, for the teachers. And following this one, we try to do the comparison. Just now in the prep study, we just give the GA information within one group. That is to say the group member just can see the, their interaction, visualization of their own group. So this study is very uh, interesting and um, I just want to do the intergroup and intergroup awareness. What their matters? Is there any difference if the group member can see their own group interaction, or if they can see all the group interaction? Does it matter regarding their learning performance? So I just do this uh, uh, research, and here we just use a quiz experiment, and uh, it's an English. English for higher education in the uh, first phase and uh, plus uh, uh, the online uh, collaborative writing. And here you can see on the left hand, you can see this is just uh, for group. We try to we conduct a cuisine experiment. Some of the one group students, the control group can only see the uh, group where information within one group. But for the experiment group, they can see all of the group's information and the class, the word count, the peer feedback, and the number of chats like that. So, and very, uh, uh, we have some uh, very uh, interesting findings. And here we collect the data, including their log data, the number of discussion methods, word count, and comments. And also we collect their questionnaire and the interview. We try to use a hybrid uh, method to analyze uh, which uh, dashboard can really help the students uh, towards uh, their final group goal. And here we can see that uh, the teachers and two designers could benefit from the study and they know what dashboard information could 
present to the students and uh, uh, what is not needed for them. And uh, here, and this study, you know that just now I say, my perspective is just from the tool designers, but a very important point is that how the teachers can interpret not the information present in the dashboard. Yeah, you know, this is very important when we go to the middle school, the teachers will feel some frustrated when encounter so many dashboards. It looks good, but it's not as useful as we expected. So we conduct this study to uh, in depth to say, uh, examine the teacher's behavior pattern and the perceptions of using teacher dashboard for facilitating guidance in CSL. And here you can say we just have uh, 14 pre-service teachers and we recorded their, the whole, uh, they're using uh, progress. And the data, we just use the critical events and the behavior, and also we use some the crude retrospective report and the interview data. With the data together, we try to know uh, how the teachers interpret the information showed in the dashboard. And finally, we have found some typical patterns when the teachers using our developed dashboard, and uh, they will have the direct action based on dashboard and some of them were just acting based on dashboard and the contractual information they will look up and down and in in compilation with the dashboard and finally give the guidance so it's quite interesting different teachers have different uh, usage of the dashboard information and that's a study and uh, also uh, we try to uh, do more uh, uh, study following this one. And here, uh, we just uh, uh, recruit more uh, pre serve teachers with pedagogy and a computer background. We try to intervene if we diagnose some problem with a, a group discussion. And here, we connect the data, include the their perspective verbal report and their intervention sheets. This is required the teachers to write down when they do their interaction intervention. And this study, we cooperated with Nian Xin Chen and uh, he gave us many uh, inspirable thoughts. And you can see here, it's not easy to conduct such uh, intervention because we have to uh, know each student's uh, each participants, what's the reason behind their action and how they regarded the uh, dashboard information and what the action will they adopt to do some intervention. So we collect uh, much data and more as, as more as we can and try to have a triangle uh, uh, test to show the teachers can get benefit from our uh, dashboard to help them to uh, do some diagnosis of student problem and uh, uh, give the corresponding uh, guidance and intervention if the problem is really uh, lead to some action. And also we have some other uh, uh, learning activities and here it's uh, Dialogical peer assessment, which is popular in our daily teaching. And here we also uh, develop a reduced uh, regulation scripts when the students do the collaboration task. And we try to uh, give them uh, some script uh, to uh, monitor and regulate in guaranteeing they can reach a good learning outcome. So different from the dashboard, the script, uh, the, the task of a script is how to design the script and how to make it feasible and useful for the students.
And here you can see that we just do the effects of the regular scripts on the feedback college and the climate of trust. You know that in the dialogical peer assessment, the trust is a very important factor that will which influence whether you will adopt other peers' feedback or not. So we try to do the uh, script uh, uh, scaffolding and try to help them. They can give more detailed feedback. And uh, if they have some problem with the feedback content, they can discuss together and try to uh, get them uh, through the conversation and finally reach a better final uh, uh, performance or learning outcome. But it's very, uh, it's somewhat uh, uh, surprising that even we enhance with a such a scaffolding of the script, the climate of trust enhanced, but the final learning outcome, it's not, does not change. Uh, it's so, even their peer feedback have some uh, enhancement, but that is not directly related to their final, uh, uh, final outcomes. And also, we try to, in such a peer feedback uh, scenario, we try to do the uh, effect of the regular script on critical thinking. You know that when they, uh, the peer uh, assessment, uh, critical thinking is a very important factor. So we try to use the ENA and other methods to do the, whether they have some effect on their critical thinking. And here are some findings and indications here. Yeah. And uh, the third form of scaffolding, I want to introduce a little bit about the conversational agent. My PhD, my PhD student went to Carnegie Mellon University and worked with the uh, Kenny Rose team and develop a, a conversational agent. You know that it's also in the cover light team period and they wear the face mask. And here we try to do whether uh, during the collaboration agent uh, compared with the script dashboard agent receive more and more attention because it can provide dynamic and real-time feedback to cater for the uh, discussion progress so here in our study we try to do comparison with two different forms one is a textual agent the other is like the virtual human agent. But I have to mention that this study was finished before ChatGPT advent. So at that time, we just based on chatbot like that. It's the technology is not very advanced. And um, so even though I believe this comparison is very important, but the findings is somewhat frustrating. And here I just attach the uh, script from the students' interview. You can see that the we found that when the students do some tasks, the important uh, requirement for them is the cognitive help. They want the answer or some inspiration to solve a problem, and they also expected our conversation agent to be smart as the. Uh, uh, the shall um, I was some smart uh, uh, educational uh, like Siri or other smart uh, agent, but at that time our technology is not uh, perform uh, does not perform so good, so they will feel boring and they have no much motivation to use the agent. So and uh, to be honest, this experiment uh, is a fail is a failure, but uh, uh, no matter the experiment, uh, we have some inspirations, have lessons to know how to design the agent uh, to give the quick and the real time feedback when the students collaborate each other. And that's uh, the first of our groups right now we are doing so. And uh, based on the uh, a series of empirical study I introduced. You can see that the technology is the trigger. We 
At the first, we just use that medium to uh, communicate with others online collaboration and then find uh, nature. We can use uh, a dashboard, script, and agent. And uh, right now, you know, we have the with the advent of ChatGPT, the technology GAI has been a key technology leading a new round of scientific and technology revolution and industrial transformation. The people around me keep asking, what should I prepare for the future? Because they feel pressure with the chat GPT like such and other big model, because it will change the way we think we teaching, we we studying and the way we're collaborating with the computer. It has a very significant impact on education. And maybe in the later, Nian Xinchen will give more detailed instruction about GAI on education. I will just touch a little bit on this one. And regarding the CCO, in the past, we just focused on the col collaboration between the persons. Now, with the CHP, et cetera, like model, we will have a new peer incorporated in our discussion. So there will be more room for our to do contact, to do uh, mainly uh, studies. And uh, we have conducted a, a very initial desktop investigation. And we found that there are three, uh, there are five different categories. And we found that there are many studies just to discuss the advantage and the change of GI in different education contexts and at different education stages. And the second, just to involve. Is that, is that possible that you can finish the talk uh, uh, with five minutes? Because that will make us to have another five minutes for the QA. Uh, thank you for your. Thank you. Okay. And the second is about the life skill questionnaire to do some uh, attitudes in position. The third, just follow into analyzing the students' interaction with GAI or, or how GI influences the learning process. And the fourth and the fifth, you can see they just compare the students using and the law using GAI. What's the difference between their learning engagement, academic performance? And finally, some studies just test to the capabilities of GM model uh, from the educational leads. And no matter all the different studies, and we found that most of them just focus on the personal learning, but our group just to for some collaborative learning. So we just do a panel study. We just incorporate a, a, a large model into our agent. And right now we will use the agent as a cognitive scaffolding and we also I, we develop the emotional and micro cognition by ourselves and with such integration we try to uh, do such uh, uh, platform to support so students can do some collaborative writing sorry for the uh, chinese uh, version but you can see here for the english prompt uh, the students can discuss and the writing, and then you can chat with the uh, GAI regarding your cognitive, and also they have some uh, task remind. And uh, right now we are, this is the work we are doing right now. I just want to share with you. And uh, finally, okay, I just uh, list some open props of GAI in CCL. I wish it will give up uh, more, uh, inspiration or direction, where should we go regarding the academic study? And here, the first part is regarding using the much model learning actives to uncover the impact of GAI on collaborative learning. And I list several questions here. And the second part is about how can GI tools be better utilized to support collaborative learning? And there needs to some of the uh, question here. So that's all for my presentation, and thank you for your attention. Okay, any comments or questions? Thank you. Thank you so much. It's very interesting to see that uh, 
uh, we can have a different kind of data, like uh, the, the video, the heart rate, the typing, putting together to do the uh, data analytics and uh, finding the uh, learner's model. So we still have uh, like a six minutes, so we can take a, about two questions. Do you have any questions uh, in person or online? If, uh, if you have a question online, then you can either type in or you can uh, just uh, um, turn on your microphone and speak here. Is there any question here? If not, then I will take my chance because actually I have uh, uh, several questions that I would like to ask. Um, so, just want to make sure, Professor Lee, can you hear me? I can hear you. Yeah, Mega. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So, my question, uh, one one of my questions for you is, uh, you mentioned about the high performance and the low performance group. Mm -hmm. So, what is the definition of the high performance and the low performance group in your research? Oh. Uh, I, I want to make sure uh, uh, here clearly. You mean that uh, what's a rubric to uh, to to divide a high performing and a low performing? Is that right? Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. So here, yeah, you know that no matter what uh, learning process are going uh, smoothly or not. The final learning outcome is very important uh, as a for a teacher. So, <coughs> most of the studies I mentioned, the low performing and high performing is based on the lowly outcomes. Some are the report to the submitted, and some are the uh, scores. For example, for the uh, English English course, the performing is based on the final score of their tests of their uh, hand in the article, their collaborate right together. So that's the general learning outcome of the student's performance. Okay. And of course, yeah, of course, yeah, if I have to be more detailed, yeah, because it's a serious score, it's a serious value, we just try to divide the and uh, at the first day, we just divide uh, the first up for uh, twenty seven percent as a hand performing group, and the lower twenty seven percent as a low performing. And in the middle, uh, we we say treat as a uh, normal groups like that. Oh. Okay, thank you so much. Any question? Uh, from the uh, in person or online. If we know them, I will have have another question because right now we know the high performance and low performance group uh, uh, definition. Now the problem is you mentioned about the low performance groups. Uh, they actually have a lot of interruption and uh, uh, arguments. But the, but the, on the other hand. Will that means they are smart students and they are arguing with each other, they try to you know, verify their, 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 their opinions. And um, so those are smart students, but they got the, the, the low grade or score at the end due to they are arguing, arguing each other and they cannot reach to a uh, you know, um, the, the consistent result or something like that. So I, 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 I can't hear very clearly, clearly, but I guess that the point you want to ask is that does the low performing groups is really, is really low performing? Is that right? Yes, correct. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, that's a very good question. Yeah, because when we submit our study and the viewers ask us a similar question and so and you know that uh, in different uh, studies uh, we will have a different analysis perspective yeah some of them we just say 
it's not we just try to uh provide some characteristics or patterns yeah we can say it's good or it's bad we just say the difference is that and maybe if you want to enhance the performance we try to give some scaffolding to uh to to support them so maybe that's uh, uh that's a main tone when we conduct such kind of study we we we, say, we don't say good or bad we just say uh the they have different performing char characteristics they have different patterns their uh strategies was their emotions or was their regulation strategy is quite different so and uh, but some of them have uh have a, a good performance and a uh, high performance scores but others have low perform performance and uh, we try to give some uh feedback and to scaffolding them and here we just want to mention that uh we we just say so we try to incorporate uh, the different data as analysis yeah we including their uh discussion text their facial is, uh, expression their gesture their eyesight also we have the uh, physiological and also we do the interview and i think that uh, with the cognitive study and we try to have uh, in-depth study because cognitive study sometimes we say oh it's just a pattern it's not really <laughs> reflect what you see so we try to do some cognitive study we try to do more in-depth analysis to see what's the reason behind their behavior and what's uh what how they're thinking when they uh, discuss with others or what's the reaction to others so we try to use some quantitative study to uncover such a, uh, uh, uncover such observation to give a more complement to explain why they perform like that. Like that. Okay, thank you so much. And uh, we are just uh, running out of our one hour demo speech. Thank you once again for. Uh, for delivering this interesting uh, uh, research that we will have done, and uh, um, thank you. Okay, thank you all. Thank you. So now.